Hello. In this video, we're going to introduce you to Laurent series. Before we do that, we're going to review a term that we've seen before in the semester. That is the idea of a singularity. Now, earlier we defined a singularity in terms of a function f. A singularity is a point at which that function fails to be analytic. So if we take as our example the function f of z equals 1 over z, we'll see that since the function is not analytic at 0, 0 is a singularity. Likewise, if f is the principal branch of the logarithm function, then the non-positive real axis consists of singularities for that function, because the function is not uh, an analytic there. It's not differentiable at points on this uh, non-positive axis. Now, in the remainder of the course, we're going to classify singularities. We're going to talk about a couple different kinds. But for today, we're just going to introduce uh, one feature of a singularity, whether it's isolated or non-isolated. An isolated singularity is defined as a singularity for a function for which there is a deleted neighborhood about that point in which f is analytic. So as an example, consider the point 0 for the function 1 over z. The function is not analytic at 0. But if we look at a small neighborhood about 0, then for every point in that small neighborhood, except for the point 0 itself, the function is analytic. And therefore, that uh, this point satisfies our definition of isolated singularity. Now on the other hand, if we were to take any point on this branch cut for the principal logarithm, and if we were to consider a small neighborhood about that point, you'll see that the small neighborhood includes another point for which the function is also not analytic. And so we'd say that these points are all non-isolated singularities. Now we're going to be talking today about a, a nifty thing you can do when you have a, an isolated singularity. And it's going to involve series. Now we've just got done talking about Taylor series. And you might ask for a Maclaurin series of a, of a simple function like 1 over z. And you'd be kind of stuck. Remember that the function 1 over z is not defined at 0. So it's certainly not uh, analytic at 0. And there was a theorem that said that power series representations centered at a point only exist if the function is analytic at that point, in a, in a neighborhood about that point. So what are we going to do if we want a series representation for 1 over z that is centered at 0? Well, it can't be a Taylor series. We're also going to run into problems for this function here. Now, 2z minus 1 over z cubed minus z squared, again, since it's not analytic at 0, we can't form a Maclaurin series, which by definition means it would be centered at 0. However, let's play around for just a little second. Remember that uh, when you have a function like this, a lot of what we like to do when we're integrating or so on is to break this up into partial fractions. So what if I were to find the partial fraction decomposition of that function? It would look like this. Now 1 over z squared and 1 over z are, are still not analytic at 0. However, this part of the partial fraction decomposition, 1 over z minus 1, is analytic at 0. And so we could take this part and find a Taylor expansion for it. In fact, uh, you'll recognize it's uh, kind of a geometric series with the sign change. Uh, we end up getting terms like this if we expand the 1 over z minus 1. Now, as I look at the result here, I couldn't really do anything as far as Taylor series went with uh, these first two terms. But the remainder, I could. And as I look at the result, I'll notice that, hey, everything here is a power of z, including these terms on the left. It's just that they're negative powers of z. Remember that 1 over z is the same as z to the negative 1. And 1 over z squared is the same as z to the negative 2. Now, this kind of suggests a new idea to us, maybe one we hadn't considered before. But what would happen if, instead of restricting yourself to 0 or positive exponents, you were allowed to think about series that had potentially negative exponents as well? Would that make sense? Would this be a good thing to study? Now, to write it in a slightly different way, the thing we're talking about looks like this. When you have positive or 0 exponents, you'll get terms that look exactly the same as they did when we were talking about Taylor series. But when you allow negative exponents, remember negative exponents move the quantity z minus z naught to the denominator. And so we'd have an expression that looks something like this. Now, 
with this in place, we're going to take a closer look at this. Now, recalling that the, uh, the terms with the non-negative exponents uh, generate a function that is guaranteed to be analytic, we might call this part with the non-negative exponents the analytic part of our series. The other part, which contains the negative powers of z minus z naught, we will call the principal part. Now the big question is, is this going to be useful to us? Is it going to work? Is it possible to represent a function in a series with both positive and negative exponents and expect the right-hand side to converge to something meaningful, and in particular to converge to the function f? Well, that's the question, and the answer is actually yes. This does make sense. And this is what we call Laurent's theorem. It says that let's suppose that you have a function f analytic in an annulus. Uh, this annulus, where the modulus of z minus z naught is bounded between little r and capital R, is illustrated here. Here's z naught at the center. Here's the circle where the modulus equals little r, the circle where the modulus exactly equals capital R. And we're talking about the region between these two circles. Now, if the function f is analytic at every point inside this annular region, then you will be able to find coefficients so that the function is equal to this infinite series. Uh, we sometimes call this a doubly infinite series because the k can go in to infinity in either the positive or the minus direction. Now, this series uh, will be valid, will converge to f if we can find the right coefficients. Now, how do we find the right coefficients? Well, there's a formula for them. The coefficient a sub k is given by this formula. And uh, this uh, formula involves an integral around c, where c is assumed to be any simple closed curve that lies within the annular region and encloses that point z naught. Now, where did this come from? You'll remember for a second that when we had Taylor series, there was a formula for a sub k that involved taking the kth derivative and evaluating it z naught, and then dividing that result by k factorial. This doesn't look much like that, but it shouldn't. You'll notice that uh, if we were to take the kth derivative where k is negative, what would that even look like? How would you take the negative third derivative of a function? Also, since our function may or may not be anal analytic at z naught, we may not be able to evaluate at, uh, at z naught whatever that kth derivative would look like. So we're going to give up on the idea of taking a direct generalization of that expression from Taylor series. However, if you read the proof of Taylor's theorem, you'll remember that that formula for a sub k in the Taylor series corresponded to uh, terms that looked like this. And this was by the Cauchy integral formula for derivatives. And in fact, the proof that you'll see of Taylor's theorem has, uh, has this exact expression for a sub k in, in Taylor's theorem. What Laurent's theorem says is that that same formula for the coefficients holds even if the exponents are negative, even if k is a negative integer. So it's kind of remarkable. And uh, Laurent's series, which are what we call these things where the uh, exponents are allowed to be positive or negative, can be seen to be a generalization of Taylor series. All right, now, uh, just like with Taylor's series, where we mentioned that we had a formula for the a sub k, whether you use the, uh, the derivative over factorial version or whether you use this integral version, this was not the best way to find um, the coefficients for a Taylor series. It was something you could do if you needed to, but we tried to find these coefficients for Taylor series using some other tricks or, or familiar series. Now the same thing is going to be true for Laurent series. Uh, this formula is almost never going to be used by us in, in this course. Um, so how do we go about finding the coefficients? Especially since we don't really have a, a formula that involves a derivative and a factorial, we really don't have any way of finding these uh, coefficients, do we? Well, we do. Um, and we're going to illustrate some of the tips and tricks you might follow in the, in the remainder of this video. We'll work a couple examples. And the, all of these examples will center along the function f of z defined to be equal to 2z minus 1 over z cubed minus z squared. Now we're going to be finding some Laurent series, and uh, as you might expect, it will be a little bit helpful to, to take a look at the partial fraction expansion. Now we saw before in the beginning of the video that this thing could be expanded in this way. 
And we also said that actually 1 over z minus 1, I can find the Maclaurin series for that. It looks like that. Now if I take a look at the result that I had seen earlier with fresh eyes, I'll notice that, uh, well, these are powers of, of z. I can think of this as powers of z minus 0. So it's like this is a, a Laurent series centered at the point 0. Now where is it valid? Remember that uh, in order for the expression to, to work, um, this uh, part of the function had a series that converged only when the modulus of z was less than 1. On the other hand, um, we can't plug in 0, so the modulus of z needs to be at least 0. And you will see that the Laurent series is going to be valid um, in that annulus between, uh, with a, a radius of 0 and an outer radius of, of 1. All right, so this thing we had written down already is a Laurent series. And you'll see that all we did there was uh, break our, our function up using partial fractions and, and a Taylor series expansion for part of it, and, and we were done. Well, let's change the problem a little bit. Um, let's think about doing the same problem, but let's do it in a slightly different way. Let's take a look at 2z minus 1 over z cubed minus z squared, and let's factor 1 over z squared outside. Now if I am trying to find a Laurent series that's valid in this region, I know that the center of that Laurent series should be 0, because this is a, a z minus 0 inside the modulus there. So if I have a 1 over z squared in front, that will be fine. I'll, expo I'll expand the rest of this in powers of z, and then I'll just take this power of z and combine it at the end. So taking a look now at the remainder of the fraction, 2z minus 1 over z minus 1, I'll see that since the numerator has a degree that's at least as big as the degree of the denominator, I can do long division on that and simplify it. So I'll do that. I'll end up with 2 minus 1 over 1 minus z. I can also get that by just doing a little bit of uh, clever uh, manipulation and then simplifying. Now, 1 over 1 minus z, I know, I remember what that looked like. That was just the powers of, of z with a minus sign attached to it. So I can substitute that in. And now as I combine the 2 minus 1 to get a 1, and as I multiply 1 over z squared through, I'll see that I get, uh, once again, that same series we arrived at before. All right, so whether you use the partial fraction decomposition or whether you simply pull out the 1 over z squared because you know that you can just put it back in at the end, you'll arrive at the same answer, the same series that's valid in the same region. Now, changing the problem a little bit by uh, changing where the center of our annular region is, uh, we will approach our, our uh, Laurent series in a similar way. We're going to take a look at the function. We're going to take a look at its partial uh, fraction decomposition. And I'll notice that this time, 1 over z minus 1 is already a term of the Laurent series. Because remember, our Laurent series was centered at 1. So this is z minus 1 to the minus first power. So all I need to do then is take these terms and expand them in terms of uh, powers of z minus 1. Now, 1 over z will be e fairly easy to do. We'll just take 1 over z and rewrite it as 1 plus z minus 1. You'll see that the reason we did this is to get the z minus 1 in here. And now it looks a lot like a geometric series kind of problem. We'll just have powers of minus 1 times z minus 1 raised to the k, where k will go from 0 to infinity. Now, if we wanted to find an expansion for 1 over z squared, uh, you might uh, use our familiar trick from before of taking the derivative of both sides of what we had seen before. The derivative of 1 over z is minus 1 over z squared. And if I take the term by term derivative of the series on the right, you'll see that minus 1 to the k is a constant. I will take the derivative of this term by using the power rule, which will leave me with k z minus 1 to the k minus 1. Now if I wanted to at that point, I could take my index of summation and shift it as well. I had written it as 1 because the derivative of the constant term was just going to be 0. But if I shift the k down and compensate by adding to the k's in the series, we'll get this expression here. Now with the series for 1 over z and minus 1 over z squared, I can substitute these in to my partial fraction decomposition. The minus 1 over z squared, I will take that series and multiply by minus 1 so that I end up with a positive 1 over z squared. And then uh, if I were to subtract off the series for 1 over z and uh, add on the term 1 over z minus 1, I will note that uh, I can do some combining of, of like terms here. 
I've got a minus one to the kz minus one to the k in both of these series. So if I were to uh, uh, take the k plus one and, uh, and simplify the minus with the minus one to the k plus one a little bit, and then subtract the one of these, I'll end up with just a k times minus one to the k times z minus one to the k. Now these are the powers where k is greater than or equal to zero. This is the analytic part of our Laurent series. And then the one over z minus one just gives us our uh, principal part. All right, what if we had a, a different region? What if we wanted to find a Laurent series that were valid for this function in the annular region where the inner radius is one and the outer radius is infinite? Well, this kind of problem is a little bit more challenging. It's going to be a little bit hard to, uh, uh, to do this unless you use a particular trick. Now the trick, it's, it's admittedly just that. It's something that works and once you see it, you can try to t tailor it for the applications you'll run into. Here's the idea. Because we want to find a series that is valid in this particular region, we'll note that the modulus of z is greater than one if and only if the modulus of one over z is less than one. Now this will look good because I know a series that has this, uh, this situation as far as its convergence goes. It's the geometric series. I know that the series I can write for this expression will converge if the one over z has modulus less than one. Now the series I can write is the powers of one over z. So I'll have one plus one over z to the first plus one over z squared and cubed and so on. And that looks like this. You'll notice that because the z is in the denominator, the z's end up in the denominator of these terms as well. But then on the other hand, if I take a look at this, I have sort of an improper fraction. If I wanted to multiply the numerator and denominator through by z, I would get z over z minus one. So I have a Laurent series for z over z minus one uh, that's centered at zero. But what I really want to do is find a series for this function. Now because I, I know that uh, z over z minus one has a nice expansion in this way, what I'm gonna do is take a look at this and search for z over z minus ones. Now as I look at the numerator there, I'll see a two z over z squared times z minus one. And now I'll do the same thing. The two and the z squared, I can just sort of pull off to the side. I don't really need those. And that will leave me with a z over z minus one. And I can substitute uh, something for that later. Now over here, the minus one, I can have a minus one over z squared, z minus one. I could factor the z squared off to the side as, as well, but then I need a z over z minus one, and I have a one. So what I will do is, um, for that remaining part, the minus one, I'll times it by z and then divide by z as well. All right, so whether or not that uh, explanation just made sense to you, please take a second and verify that this expression on the left is exactly equal to the expression on the right. What we've done is rewrite it so that we can see some z over z minus ones because we know that we have a nice expansion for that. Now putting those expansions in, putting a, a copy of this sum in for each z over z minus one, we'll end up with an expression like this. Uh, we'll take the two over z squared and we'll put it in through the first series. We'll get the sum from k equals zero to infinity of two over z to the k plus two. Now this expression on the right will have a minus one over z cubed times onto that series. And we'll get the summation from k equals zero to infinity of one over z to the k plus three. Now shifting the indices, so they're both in terms of z to the k, we'll have series that look like this. And then you'll notice that uh, we have like terms. So combining these, we'll note that the k equals two term doesn't have a corresponding term in the second series. So we'll pull it off to the side, z two over z squared. But then the other two, uh, uh, the remaining terms in the two series will combine and we'll just get one over z to the k, where k runs from three to infinity. Now this is a series that is going to be valid when the modulus of one over z is less than one, or in other words, when the modulus of z is greater than one. You'll see that because um, uh, the, the series should be centered at zero, we have a z minus zero inside. Uh, what we have here is, is correct. All right, that's a crash course, an introduction to Laurent series. 
If you search online, you'll find a bunch of other examples people have worked out of some of the tips and tricks of, of how to find these things. Have some fun with it. See you later.